Okay, this is your solvent bench. It's got one tank in the back, a static tank. So I have it filled with water right now. It's a fairly deep tank. And it does have a drain. Uh, can be turned on here. SST is the stainless steel tank. And that'll just open a valve. Let me shut that off for a second. Come to the back of your thing. It's raining through the... Uh, what I'll do is I'll turn that on again. We have a solvent drain here. It's a uh, cast iron pipe. See, watch, I'm going to turn the drain on to see the drain. I don't have it hooked up, so I'm just going to turn it on for an uh, instant. You can't mess that at all. See, that's where the tank drains to. Again, that, the tank is drained through this. Uh, the switch panel here in the upper part. We also have a aspirator. Turn that on with the aspirator panel here. And you can aspirate out the tank or whatever else you need to aspirate. Again, let's go to the back and we'll see what and that's also drained through the same drain, which is your solvent drain. So both the solid state tank and the aspirator drain to the solid drain. That okay, otherwise the tank is just static. Uh, we do have a timer up here. I'll just hit start on that. And it just times down. It has no other function. When, once the 10 minutes is up, it'll give you an alarm. I can hit stop at that point. That'll halt it. Start again to start it. Stop and reset. In order to program it, you need to hold the stop reset button and then hit the start. We're in setup mode. And that's our time there, 10 minutes. You can just change your time down, let's change it down to one minute. Time down. I just want to explain. It does have a, a fire detection system, but we do not qualify it here. But it's still in place here. What I did is I shut the breaker off to the fire detection system in the back, and I also disabled the, uh, the solenoid, which is would open up to the CO2 tank. If you come down here, you'll see the CO2 tank is still in place. I didn't check that out at all, so I don't know if it's charged or functional. So all we did is disable the. Uh, fire alarm system uh, completely. The eye would be up here. This box right here. And again, you'll have to have a certified fire alarm uh, technician come in and take a look at that. Okay, we, we're getting our alarm here at 10 seconds. Just to uh, alert the uh, operator that the uh, timer's up and then once it's over it'll ring constantly and then we can reset out of that. Other than the tank we also have a cascade dump rinse. So here's the controller up here for that. I have it set for eight cycles so we'll just go ahead and get started just so that it's functional. So the first thing that it'll do is it'll dump see that the spray bars are working. Now it's filling from the bottom and spraying. It's filling up. Now just one thing to point out, there's a plenum, which is a wall that separates the front from the back. So all the water is on the front part and is drained through the water drain. Anything in the back will be drained out through the plenum drain, drain if it fills in the back section of the, of the, uh, the wet bench. 
The other grain is the grain, grain I showed you for this here, which is your stainless steel tank and aspirator grain. So you actually have three grains. We'll go around the back and take a look at that. We'll just let this fill up and dump one more time just to show this operation. And there it goes again. Normally you'd keep this closed. While we're here, I just want to show you there's a, a glove cleaner here, glove rinse. Just press down on that blue handle down at the bottom there. So if you need to clean your gloves, there's two spray bars on either side, you can see. Anyway, you have a uh, air gun here, blow up the top. Whatever, and you do have a water, a DI water gun. the aspirator back in here. We'll let the cascade dump here to finish. That more or less takes care of the actual functionality of this uh, system here. Over to the left here, I'm going to show you that we do have our utilities clearly labeled. This is your DI water supply. You have a CDA's clean, dry air, 60 PSI. That's to operate some of the valves inside. And you do have N2 required at 40 psi. Now this head case, because of the solvent bench, is kept under positive pressure with the nitrogen. I'm going to I'll show you that, talk about that in a little while. And that's just for safety reasons, so it's, you have your positive pressure of nitrogen in there, so you won't have any sparks at all occurring. Alright, finally if we walk around the back here. Talk about the lower portion of the uh, system here. This is the pump that's used for the aspiration. We have a couple of valves here that are used for the DI rinse. We do have a DI gun back here that you can spray out. Again, this will lead to the, uh, the back side of the plenum. We have control valves for our head case purge, uh, our, our uh, N2 gun. And this is for our pump here. We have a couple of on-off valves here for your water flow. Our water also comes in here. Just looking down here at the drains, we'll talk about the drains again. Right here, this one here, it's labeled. That's your plenum drain that I talked about. I'll show you the switch in the front that needs to be turned on for that. Again, our solvent and aspirator drain is this uh, cast iron black pipe. And this, this pipe here is a two inch drain. It's coming off is the, uh, this is the water drain. Okay. okay, you can see here that our conference has counted down. We're at uh, the third cycle right now. And in the front here, I just want to show you, this is our, uh, our plenum drain. There is a float in the back, so once the level gets too high, that could be a mixture of water and solvent. Uh, in, a, in a back plenum. Once that gets too high, this light will, uh, will light up to tell you that it's full. And all you need to do at that point is to just turn this switch to here, and our drain will open in the back. We'll come around the back and we'll see it draining the, uh, the plenum drain. And I guess it's not full. Okay, we'll take one more look at the, uh, the head case inside here. But we'll, we'll, we'll let the, uh, we'll come back in a little while. We'll, we'll wait for the cascade to finish up. Okay, I added a little water to the back plenum just to show that that drain is functional. Talk about the EPO here. Let's shut the plenum drain off. Turn the system on and off. Uh, of course, you just have the power off up here. That'll shut the uh, all the controllers down, except for this one. This one's a 24 volt controller, so it stays on because this controller is also 24 volt, so it stays on. Anyway, it's just a timer. But anyway, if you want to turn it on, get the power on. Power off. You can see the light turns on as you turn the power on. 
Now, if you do have a problem powering it up, I just want to point out what there is an interlock to you. For the head case, and you exhaust me and two pressure. Right away, we, we got knocked out here. The reason being, there's an interlock on the door here. There's a switch here. Then there's an interlock on the back door. There's also an interlock on the uh, nitrogen pressure to the head case and the exhaust pressure. So if you lose exhaust nitrogen pressure, or one of these doors are open, you're going to lose power to the entire system. It's just a safety factor. So let's look in the back here. I'll point out the some of the uh, equipment that's here in the back. We do have a door switch here. That you, so you have the front door switch, the back door switch. In the interlock chain, you have a pressure sensor here. So if there's no nitrogen pressure going to the head case, the switch will not be made. And finally, there's an exhaust monitor here. It's set to a uh, 0.2 inches of water vacuum. I have it set to normally on the normally closed position. Once the exhaust is hooked up, we don't have an exhaust system here. So once your exhaust is hooked up, you'll want to put this wire here to the center, which is a normally open position. And just to show you where that gets connected, is this line is reading the exhaust vacuum. So it's fed through this port here, and it's tied in right through here. So once your exhaust is hooked up, you have to have at least 0.2 inches of water or vacuum in order to enable that switch. So that'll monitor your exhaust. So if the exhaust seems to go down, that switch will open up and your VPO will no longer be working. Here's your main power uh, circuit breaker. The main power coming in is 208 single phase with a neutral and a ground so you need four wires two hot a neutral and a ground now we have a, a couple of breakers up here again the fire breaker is off there's a breaker for a 110 outlet up front here for cpu it must have been on the system prior to this it's not being used so i keep that off so the only two breakers you need to have on are the epo and a, uh, this is your controller breaker back here are your uh your air control valve for your quick dump, your tank drains, and your aspirator. So that should cover about everything about this system. Again, it's a fairly simple system, but it does have some safety features involved here that need to be uh, satisfied.